Hello and welcome back to another quick tutorial. Today we are looking into our multi-scene example from last time and extend it with signals. Therefore, let's create a new game node um, file in our project and copy over from the main menu node all the stuff and wipe out the unnecessary code and also ensure to rename it to the game node. And of course, as usual, once we are done with the refactoring, let's try to build it and see if we have access in our Godot editor to this particular new created class. Therefore, we need to reload the Godot project. And we change the type of the game scene to our new game node. In general, signals are a very comfortable way to connect components between each other and send one message to the other one. Um, but before we do that, we will most likely do it within the ready method. But before we do it, we, let's quickly heading over to our player and reduce the velocity of the gravity. Because what we want to try to do is, as soon as the, um, the player is hitting the ground, we want to remove it. So now heading back to the game node, we will finally do some extensions there. I will just quickly show how signals are in general defined. So you need to use this signal macro and then call a method signature or declare a method signature. Let's say in that case on player did collide. We most likely will move it later to the player anyway, but I just want to highlight quickly how to declare it. And in the ready method, we will connect it with the connect method. Um, and as an argument, you need to pass the proper um, signal name. And then you would actually see, um, or you can then define a callable, which is the base component, which will be called afterwards when the signal is emitted. So that one would be on player did collide as you see also defined in the signal. And then we need to define the callable. So that's the method which gets invoked when we in emit it. Um, of course it requires the player because we want actually that when the player is colliding that we emit a signal and from there on um, the game node should have this kind of execution of or invocation of this method. Therefore let's get the node from the player. So there's the get node method and there's also the get node as method um, where you just declare the type to it and then you just get it. This method will basically panic if the node does not exist. And then we can also create our callable which is just used by player.callable and then the method um, of the particular player you want, for example, to execute. But as mentioned, that's now just the syntax. Now let's really move the code pieces where they should be. So the signal we move in the first place to the player RS file. Once completed, we are going back to our game node and then define that we want to connect the particular method of our game node with this kind of event. Therefore, we use the player, define the signal with the dot .connect and then of course we call the callable which is referring to this player did collide with static body as you see it here in the implementation of the game, uh, game node. And once this is done, we just provide the callable as defined in line 23. And now what we want to do here, we could, for example, free our player. So therefore, we just copy over the line 25 to have the player also in this um, method underneath and then just call the free method, for example. 
please also note that so far we did not add a emitting action from the player, for example, to call the on player did collide um, signal. But let's quickly see if everything works. So we recompile and build it. And we notice a crash. So that is most likely caused because of our node was unfortunately wrong reference. So in the editor I called player with capital letters and therefore I need to update that one. If I would not do, I, it results in the crash as mentioned. And now it looks good again. Okay, so heading back to our code, we will now add the logic to emit the signal from the player. In that basic example, we just do it as soon as we collide. So therefore, let's just add it in the kinematic collision 2D, if condition, the emitter. So therefore, we just say the base dot emit and the signal name as we had it on player did collide. And the arguments for now are empty. We will heading back to the arguments in a later episode where we potentially will connect it with a ECS, then these arguments are at least quite useful. But that's a bit out of scope for now. So after the testing, we notice that there is an error happening and we can see, okay, this is because of the free method. So therefore, um, we should not free the player, we just will use the remo uh, remove child directly from the game node and try the whole thing again. Don't forget to add the go.api. And because we are using here get node s and we do a specific cast, we should actually make the generic one. So we try to get the node without the type, which is then just a basic node. Um, we unwrap it because it was an optional pass it through and ensure also that the player again is converted with the into properly. Save it again, build the whole thing and now let's try it out. Normally once the collider happens it should remove the player. Yes and it worked. So as a last step let's get rid of the warnings. That's more or less a cosmetic um, thing. Um, I will commit it again then to my github repo. I hope you enjoyed the video and it gave a bit of introduction to signals. Um, thank you for watching and then see you next time.